Hello and uh, welcome to a brand new episode of uh, the Daily Debate. My name is Ahmed Nader and today we will be focusing on uh, the presidential activities of uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in the past week and uh, it focused as one of uh, the main priorities of uh, the president's agenda in the past six or seven years under his tenure, the reclamation of uh, 500,000 fadans under the name of uh, the project Mustaqbal Misr or Egypt's Future. We'll be focusing uh, on uh, that uh, uh, agricultural grant project in Egypt on uh, al Daba Access Highway till uh, the country's northwest providing uh, opportunities, job opportunities and indirect job opportunities as well. And uh, tonight I'm honored to be having with me in the studio engineer Hassan Shaban, the former vice chairman of uh, the Farmer Syndicate, to be focusing on such a very important topic. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you for inviting me. Appreciate it. We will be starting straight away with uh, a report detailing what happened uh, during the visits of President Abdel Fattah Hassisi to be inspecting the latest from uh, the agricultural project of uh, Mustaqbal Misr or Egypt's future. So let's see it. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi inspected on Friday a mega project aimed at the expansions of agricultural production through the reclamation of 500,000 fadans along the Daba Access Highway in the country's northwest. The new project, dubbed to Mustaqbal Misr, comes as part of the state's strategy to maximize productive opportunities in areas of land reclamation and agricultural production. The project is a new addition to the series of mega developmental projects under execution by the state in all fields and across the country. Mustaqbal Misr aims to provide high quality crops with affordable prices to the public fill the gap in local market between imports and exports in order to save foreign currency for the national economy. The president was briefed on the development in the project by officials on the ground. Mustaqbal Misr will also provide thousands of direct job opportunities, hundreds of thousands of indirect job opportunities, as well as investment opportunities for leading agriculture firms in the private sector. The project is located along the extension of Daba Access Highway, which is one of the new major roads executed as part of the under-expansion national network of roads. The infrastructure of the project will see a fully integrated system for irrigation and farming, which will be equipped with high-tech equipment for various agricultural operations. Reshaping uh, the development map uh, under the tenure of uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi, as I said in the beginning tonight, we'll be focusing on uh, the presidential activities of President Hassisi in the past week prioritizing the agricultural development and the land reclamation of 500,000 fadans uh, near uh, al Daba Access Highway to the country's northwest under the name of uh, a project titled Mustaqbal Misr or Egypt's Future. Engineer Hassan Shaban, how do you see the strategic importance of uh, such a project? Definitely what's happening really in, the, in this particular area is... Uh, is very important because this area is along one of the major highways that were actually constructed recently in the, in the last couple of years. So it makes any crop, when, when, when you grow any crop in this particular area, it's very easy to market through the, uh, this, these uh, highways. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this area is uh, alongside an already developed area, which is uh, Al Khatadba, uh, and the rest of the villages that are adjacent to the delta. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, alongside, you know, on the borders between the desert and the green area in the in the delta, you have a lot of villages, and this is where actually I hope that this will be a beginning of coordinating. Uh, the redistribution of population in condensed villages where people actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, uh, use the dark soil uh, in uh, construction. I mean, they built over very rich soil uh, that should be actually used mm -hmm. or utilized for uh, better crops. Yes. So, uh, I think cultivating this area will create an attraction uh, to uh, the new generation that is looking for future, as the name of the, the, uh, the, the project is uh, the future of Asia. Yes. So I think uh, if uh, there were substitute villages, mm -hmm. like the new Khatadba, like the new Kirdasa, like, you know, along uh, the, the, uh, the, the highway, mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, to uh, encourage uh, the farmers to go to these particular areas. Yes. But, but the, we need to utilize the massive area that were cultivated in growing one or two or three maximum crops mm. and, uh, 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 you know, have a, a remedy for what happened in the Delta and uh, uh, the Valley long time ago, like uh, better than... 70 years, almost 70 years ago, when you actually, you, you divided the land to small areas and you cannot control the productivity of the crops. So when you have a large area where you go grow mm. one or two or three crops, this will have an, an economical impact. Yes. You're, you're going to have a massive production. Uh, considering also that uh, when you cultivate a new area, you use new methods of agriculture, mm -hmm. and new methods of uh, irrigation, harvest, uh, plantation. Everything is almost automated. So uh, you do not need the big number of labors that we used to have in the old-fashioned way of uh, growing uh, crops in uh, the smaller areas in the Delta and the Valley. So, uh, it is uh, recommended that, yes, we encourage the young people, newly married or whatever, whatever to go to these areas, form a gigantic uh, company, and uh, I think uh, create new jobs and give shares to in, as an incentive to these young people to come to these areas. You know, a, a salary and an incentive from... Uh, a, a, a share or two shares, whatever it is, to encourage these people to relocate from their old villages mm. to the new villages. Uh, mm. you, it's like a place have, to live and to work at to the work. same exactly. time. Exactly. Mm. Also, we could consider uh, having a, 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 an industry uh, adjacent to these areas mm. where the crops could be used as a raw material for these uh, factories. Mm. Uh, if we grow uh, olive, for instance, we could have uh, oil, uh, uh, olive oil uh, uh, plant, you know, plants mm -hmm. next to it. Uh, if we grow uh, a, a, any a kind of vegetable or uh, fruits, for instance, yes. we could have uh, plants to dry fruits uh, using solar energy. You know, it's a method of drying the fruits, mm -hmm. so you can use it if you wet it, it, it you regain. Uh, if we grow potatoes, again, we could have plants to, cre you know, to produce uh, potato uh, powder, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we need to create new communities along these uh, 500,000 for that. It's a very promising uh, project, definitely. Uh, and uh, the location is excellent. Yes. Uh, Speaking of uh, the location and the agricultural production, what are the crops that could be cultivated there, in your opinion? Uh, of course, uh, the desert, the, the quality of soil determines uh, the crop. This mm. is number one. Yes. Availability of water uh, determines the uh, type of crop that we're going to grow. So uh, uh, the climate itself mm. is excellent in Egypt. Uh, Egypt enjoys 
uh, two zones, you know, nine and ten. And this is, uh, climate-wise, we do not have a problem. This is the most suitable climate to grow anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the desert, you could grow a lot of vegetable, actually. Mm -hmm. the vegetable is excellent crops in the desert. Uh, putting in mind uh, that we have to manage agriculture in the valley and the delta if we, uh, uh, you know, just uh, uh, allocate the new areas for vegetable, for instance, mm -hmm. we're going to have to uh, organize the agriculture in the delta and say we're going to grow cotton, for instance, mm -hmm. the heavy crops, heavy crops that we stopped uh, 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 growing uh, for some time. Yes. We need to revive Mahalla al Kubra mm -hmm. uh, by growing uh, cotton. The, uh, a lot of farmers actually stopped growing cotton uh, due to you know market problems mm -hmm. and prices. But if, as I, I think, the government is, is it too very expensive to grow, or is it hard to market now? Uh, the uh, return is not that attractive. Mm. So actually, it takes a lot of effort, and the return is not attractive. So, but uh, if we have a, a, you know a, a pre contract like a prepaid contract mm. uh, that will encourage the farmers to grow crops ahead, you know ahead and of he knows at the end of the process that, that he, he will be getting sold, this yes. sum of money it is sold, yes. mm. so uh, uh, I think the whole thing requires a management it's a it's yes. a matter of management uh, utilizing the rich soil of the Delta and the Valley for strategic crops like uh, wheat like uh, rice, like cotton, mm -hmm. uh, like corn, and a growing vegetable and fruits in the desert, it will be ideal. Uh, the, the, the government also is very keen on using uh, uh, the greenhouses, the, uh, the greenhouses yes. that's you know, all over the place right now. And I think we ought to consider non-traditional uh, crops, mm -hmm. meaning uh, we have to target a market. I mean, say we're going to, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, grow a crop and allocate this crop for, to, mm. uh, to be exported to Europe. Mm. And let's say that uh, flowers, for instance. Yes. Uh, uh, to grow flowers, uh, uh, you know, it, it's the uh, rules and the regulation to export flowers to the European Union is not as harsh as, uh, you know, uh, exporting vegetables or mm. fruits. It is a lot easier. And, uh, you know, the weather and the soil, uh, it permits that. So if we use the greenhouses to grow uh, flowers, for instance, mm. this will give us a good return. You know, uh, mm. Kenya is a leading uh, uh, country right now in growing flowers. Uh, but we are closer to the markets uh, in Europe. Yes. So once this pandemic is over, I mean, this is a, a, a special case right now. Mm -hmm. But once the pandemic is over, I think uh, Europe uh, will be our target to uh, export flowers, for instance, uh, jasmine uh, uh, paste, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, uh, mm -hmm. oils produced from uh, peppermint, whatever. The things that they lack. Right, exactly. Mm. And it is easy for us to grow and uh, the soil and the water, availability of water is there because you know that this expansion requires additional amounts of water. We barely, the 55 billion cubic meters that mm. we have is barely enough for our traditional uh, agriculture in the valley and the delta. So if we go to the desert, this means that we're going to depend on uh, underground water. Yes, speaking wells. of uh, the water scarcity uh, in the desert mm -hmm. or at this project, Mustaqbal uh, Musra at Al Daba Access Highway and to the northwest of the country, how can we be beating uh, water scarcity according to the latest technologies? Well, uh, of course, uh, you know, water uh, uh, in this particular area, uh, 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 in, in a lot of these areas, is a leakage 
mm. from the river Nile. Mm. I mean, it's fresh water because it is not that far mm. from uh, the Nile. So actually, uh, once you go uh, to depth is like 150 meters or something like that, you find fresh water and uh, it is almost uh, Nile water. Mm -hmm. But, but in, in, in some other cases, uh, the wells could be saline and the amount of uh, uh, salinity is a little bit high. So we have two uh, uh, alternatives. The first alternative is to deal with, with, with this uh, 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 salinity by using uh, certain equipment and this mm. would be expensive. But I have good news for everybody. I think there is a, 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 an invention, an Egyptian 100% mm. uh, invention invented by an Egyptian uh, to uh, reduce salinity of uh, underground water if it is contaminated with uh, contaminated with uh, uh, with sulfur, or mm -hmm. uh, it has a, a high amount of saline. So uh, very soon, I think w it, uh, this invention will be used if required on wells that uh, have a high uh, percentage of salinity. Yes. Number two, you could use crops that can. Uh, resist this salinity mm -hmm. and maybe absorb it in some cases because mm -hmm. I know for sure that uh, in the Ministry of Agriculture and in the research center uh, uh, in the Ministry of Agriculture they have uh, uh, researchers for plants that could grow on saline water maybe even uh, sea water directly that mm -hmm. that much mm -hmm. I mean salt water uh, that, that a plant could uh, you know, absorb mm. and digest mm. uh, uh, salt water directly. Uh, it's a family of uh, plants called the halophyte mm -hmm. uh, plants. And uh, the, 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 this particular plant, uh, we have researchers on it, is, is uh, silicornia. It's a, it's, a, it's a plant that is suitable for uh, growing uh, meadows to grow cattle. Yes. Or uh, camels, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that instead of just concentrating on uh, plantations and uh, crops, that we could uh, use these researches uh, in uh, creating meadows mm -hmm. and creating new industries like uh, cattle raising and uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it will be very uh, important for us to turn the desert to green area to uh, in, uh, increase the amount of humidity even in the area. Because, uh, you see, the desert is like a big mirror. Once uh, uh, the desert is bare desert, uh, it will, uh, you know, uh, kick the clouds away. It's, mm. it's a very hot so the clouds will never really approach this area because it's like mm -hmm. a huge mirror. But once you cover areas with greenery, you change the, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, the climate, mm -hmm. actually. You attract... It could be attracting rain. You attract, you attract mm -hmm. rain. You attract clouds. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, it rained in Oinat some time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, when, once you started to grow things in Oinat, uh, you've changed the climate and it rains. Mm -hmm. which, which never really happened before. But once you grow anything that changes the, the face of Earth, actually you attract clouds and uh, this is one way of, mm -hmm. you know, especially, uh, uh, you know, if you grow a, a, even a plantations uh, or plants suitable for cattle raising, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like the green mm -hmm. meadows in Australia, for instance, you use uh, one quarter of the regular amount of water that mm. you use for traditional crops. Mm. And you could be creating a whole different industry. Exactly. Mm. You, you could actually have a, an Egyptian cowboy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, actually, it's, uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of, as farmers, mm. we have a lot of dreams, but, mm. uh, you know, hopefully, mm. uh, uh, you know. Uh, speaking of dreams, do you think that 
dreams are turning into reality now under the tenure of President Assisi, especially that this file is one of his priorities. Definitely. What's happening uh, in Egypt right now is, is a miracle. There is mm. no doubt about that. You know, we're catching up, you know. We've lost a great deal of time, uh, you know, doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at these six years, the, the past six years, what happened in the last six years actually is worth like at least 30, 40 years of, uh, yes. of other, uh, I don't want to mention names, but, uh, you know, there is a lot of hard work and a lot of investment in what happened. Uh, I think uh, it's about time for these great projects to, uh, to be utilized, uh, you know, to, to be a servant for uh, a, a bigger target, which is the relocation of uh, population in Egypt. Mm. You know, we need to, to distribute the 100 million uh, population of Egypt mm. over the whole area, the, the whole, mm. you, you know, you have There is enough million, space. You, you have enough one resources. million square mm. a k kilometer. Mm. So you need to actually uh, spread this, uh, this population over, mm. but you need to create jobs, you need to create attraction uh, for uh, this population to be relocated. Mm. I think it, it requires uh, some uh, some statistics, uh, statistics where actually where the village is most condensed, you can actually make a deal mm. and relieve these villages from the massive population to the new areas that the government is mm. uh, cultivating mm -hmm. right now. So th the first step of uh, the 500,000 bedlands are located. Uh, near a Daba axis. What are mm. the, uh, in your opinion, the other places all over Egypt that uh, could be containing some of this project? The government actually have a lot of activities in Farafra area, mm. the western desert, and uh, it's, it's, you know, they, uh, the effort over there is very impressive. Uh, also, uh, I would love to see uh, uh, the uh, area of Wainat and Tushka uh, 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 handled in a different way, meaning the uh, the nu nu the people in Nubia actually are very talented in growing cattle and uh, raising cattle and uh, you know uh, going after camels. Yes. I think if we have a, a huge uh, area, man-made meadows in this particular area, it will not consume a lot of water. It would consume. Uh, you know, as I said, one quarter of the regular uh, mm. water used for other crops, but you're going to have a lot of protein. I mean, you're producing meat. Yes. So, mm. uh, uh, you, you know, we don't want to really uh, always consider traditional crops. We need to think outside the box for a while and have new crops uh, and utilize these crops to the benefit and have a, a, an economic return from it. Uh, agriculture is uh, is a mean of business. This is business. Yes. So what is the return? I mean, the return is very important. You actually, mm -hmm. just like any other business, agriculture an is a, it's an investment. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so w w you, we have to really consider utilizing all the areas, uh, the, the western desert between Tushka and Wainat and this particular area is very suitable, but the problem is when you grow a crop in this particular area, it is far from the markets. Mm. Tra transporting the, the, the crops from this area to the populated mm -hmm. uh, areas cost a lot, the transportation mm. to market. So the product will be more expensive. Right. Mm. But when you actually grow cattle in this particular area, and you have a, an automatic slaughtering uh, mach, mach, you know, area plant mm. where you actually grow cattle and you just uh, have a huge fridge for mm. meat. And you have, uh, you can transport Could be this. Could serving the area and the neighboring and areas and the neighboring countries. And uh, not only that, mm. you actually can transport it by railway. Mm. It's, it's not really, uh, it will not be uh, damaged or anything. It's a, it's a good where actually can bear transporting it. Yes. The cost is bearable. Mm -hmm. uh, I think choosing the right crop with the right market 
and, uh, and trying to have sustainable development in the cultivated areas, like uh, the Daba area, uh, you need life over there. You mm -hmm. need to attract uh, 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 the young people in the adjacent villages to live over there and uh, uh, settle once and for all. So you're going to have to give them some infrastructure, schools, hospitals, and so forth. A community. E exactly. Mm. Uh, make life uh, easier for these people and let them settle over there. This is, mm. this is the future of Egypt. I mean, but choose the right crops. You know, talking about even uh, the uh, crops that grow on saline water, uh, I know for sure that in the uh, 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 genetic uh, chain of these crops, if, if you take the gene that makes this plant that can digest sodium chloride, and take the gene and put it in a different uh, 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 genetic structure like wheat or rice, mm. you turn the wheat and the rice to be able to digest salt water. Mm -hmm. So and I can grow it in different areas. Yes. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you cannot stop. Science mm. is a servant for uh, agriculture. Mm. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the developing met agricultural methods is, is amazing. Uh, equipment and products. <laughs> also, I love to see uh, Egypt on the map of uh, countries that produce seeds actually the uh, the business of of seed is more profitable than the crops itself I mean uh, the countries actually produce tomato seeds mm -hmm. and they don't go to, they don't grow tomatoes actually mm. they just sell it mm. to other countries and they import a tomato cheap mm. but the seeds are expensive so I like to see a seed business in Egypt. Uh, we need management. I think uh, what's happening right now, you know, uh, uh, the government is not, or the president actually, is not letting any area without touching. He's actually yes. uh, uh, amazing. Also, the value of Kenna, mm -hmm. it's a very promising area. It could be a, a mining area as well as. Uh, uh, an agricultural area because uh, the water over there is available and the soil is is, is suitable because there was a, uh, a branch of the River Nile uh, many moons ago used to run uh, in this particular area and they dried but it is uh, uh, a lot of uh, sedimentation uh, in this particular area. Minya mm -hmm. is a promising area also, the western desert in Minya. I think we're, we're moving ahead in every direction, but we need to grow the right crops and target certain markets uh, because, as I said in the, in the beginning and the end, it is a business, actually. Yes, it is a business. Before turning to the other report of uh, the evening, uh, speaking to the farmers now, the current farmers as engineer Hassan Shaban, you are the former vice chairman of the Farmer Syndicate. Mm -hmm. How do you see this project as a message for the current farmers and for the future farmers who thinks about going into the business that this is an opportunity for me to be finding um, more job opportunities and different industries surrounding uh, the 500,000 fedans as other industries and other projects as well? To be honest with you, the farmers in Egypt are uh, under an extreme pressure right now, actually. Mm. The prices are not very attractive. And uh, the, uh, there is a, you know, wages and salaries are very high, relatively high, which is, uh, a, a, you know, when in the past, the low wages were an advantage in Egypt. It's no longer like that. It mm. is, ex it is uh, an expensive item. Uh, I think... Uh, farmers require uh, to see that they actually share their means of production, meaning I would love to see farmers own their own fertilizer plant. And I hope that the government will be able to subsidize the gas uh, uh, used in mm. producing 
a, a cheap a fertilizer for the farmers. The farmers require uh, ammonium nitrate uh, 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 fertilizers, and I, I, I hope that you know somehow the central cooperative, uh, you know, uh, which is the organization that controls the distribution of fertilizers in 7,000 villages in Asia, will actually invest in plants that could actually have a, a return and reduce the cost of uh, the uh, uh, means of uh, production in, uh, in, in agriculture. Also, the government is encouraging new methods of ag uh, irrigation, yes. dripping uh, uh, irrigation and so forth. I hope that uh, the government will reduce the taxes over these, uh, 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 you know, tools, because this will encourage the farmers again to turn uh, to dripping uh, irrigation if the price is, goes down. Hopefully, uh, maybe the government will be able to uh, encourage businessmen to have a plant that produces uh, dripping uh, hoses and stuff like that made out of used tires mm. uh, instead of... Mm, that's you know, expensive. Yes, mm. they, they, they could actually use old tires, mm. the rubber, and melting it and... Uh, Coming up with uh, with uh, with the required uh, you know dripping uh, method you know uh, uh, hoses uh, a lot of ideas but uh, the uh, I think also the farmers would love to see a, a system mm. where they can after retirement have a pension mm -hmm. uh, you know it's it we're going into this direction but. Uh, you know, Egypt is huge, uh, and it's amazing. Whatever you drive, you see there is, uh, uh, you know, the government is there. Yes. They're, they're working in all directions, to be honest with you. But as I said, they're trying to uh, make up for the time lost in the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've lost 40 years of our, uh, you know, available time to develop our country. So uh, I think we're working very hard. It requires a lot of imagination, a lot of uh, will and uh, investments. Uh, I hope, you know, by, uh, you know, the next decade, we will be able to, de to be there. Yes, and uh, no time to waste, of course, is always the slogan of uh, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi as he ordered the government to be restructuring the agricultural field as soon as possible and we will be having more information about those instructions in the upcoming report. Egypt is seeking to maximize its benefit from agricultural lands as President Afet Hassisi has directed the government to work on restructuring the country's agricultural field. President Sisi has requested from the government to provide foodstuffs via several key projects that have been presented to the president, including canal lining project on an area of 20,000 kilometers. Work is underway on 7,000 kilometers of canals, and Prime Minister Mustafa Madmouli asked concerned ministers earlier this week to follow up latest developments of the modern irrigation project, as well as national canal lining project. The meeting was attended by Minister of Water Resources and Irrigation Muhammad Abdel Ati, Minister of Supply and Internal Trade Ali Musilhi, along with Minister of Agriculture and Land Reclamation Al Sayyid Al Qusir. The Prime Minister highlighted the efforts made to expand the modern irrigation project so that it would entail another 4 million fadans, in addition to the 1 million fadans currently covered. The government will provide the necessary funding for the two projects, Madbouli said. He directed the ministers concerned to outline an integrated plan and specific time frames for the implementation of them. The Prime Minister also urged the ministers to develop a working plan with a view to achieve self-sufficiency of strategic crops, especially oil crops, whose products are being imported.
also, as we did see in uh, the past report, the directives of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to be restructuring the agricultural field as soon as possible in the country. Engineer Hassan Shaban, the former vice chairman of the Farmer Syndicate, is here tonight. Uh, Engineer Hassan Shaban, um, how do you see those directives and in which direction, especially in the field of irrigation? The government actually is uh, uh, performing a massive project right now, very impressive. Mm. They're actually uh, lining all the, uh, the, the channels, the major channels so far, with concrete to prevent seepage to the soil mm. and reduce completely uh, the cost of dredging and uh, cleaning the uh, open channels in the countryside. Uh, this is a huge project, and I think it's a very expensive project. Uh, but again, it will uh, increase the amount of water available for agriculture and reduce the amount of uh, uh, money spent over dredging and clearing these uh, channels. Uh, How often was the, the process of dredging? took uh, place in Egypt? It's a continuous uh, operation, but I think average, uh, it, it, it's done yearly or, you know, if maximum, it, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a year in and year out. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, plants that used to grow on the sides of the uh, uh, channels are completely removed. Uh, they shaped the, uh, the sides of the channels and they use the technique, uh, you know, very suitable for our uh, soil and uh, our waterways. Very impressive project, and uh, it's taking place in a lot of governors, actually. Mm -hmm. in and you've seen it as well. You've seen the project. Yes, it, uh -huh. it is across my, my, my own land that I grow in. So actually, it's a very impressive project, and... Uh, Hopefully, uh, this will increase the amount of water allocated for uh, the farmers. Mm. Uh, and this will actually reduce the budget that the Ministry of Irrigation used to allocate for dredging the channels. Mm -hmm. So it's like an investment for the long term. Right. I'm hopefully. Now, hopefully. I'm saving money and effort in the future. Hopefully, mm. uh, after this beautiful project is handled and done, I hope that uh, you know our countryside habits of you know damaging these channels and maybe uh, using uh, using them wrongly in a different way mm -hmm. will be uh, stopped, and uh, you know we might be able to even to put an incendiary uh, plant in in each village to get rid of the uh, uh, hazard waste or the solid waste that that was used to be thrown in the open channels because it's not really, it doesn't look uh, proper and it actually contaminates the water. And then we complain about using uh, a polluted water in agriculture. We do it ourselves and we hurt ourselves with our own hands. Mm. One of uh, the main directors of President Abdel Fattah Hassisi for the uh, reforming process of the agricultural sector is to be having uh, new roads, as you've mentioned in the first segment of uh, the episode, mm -hmm. uh, to be having more roads, more highways, uh, more power plants uh, near uh, the crops and near the production mm -hmm. process itself, mm -hmm. an internal power grid, uh, for example, for the 500,000 Fedans project. Mm -hmm. How do you see those directives being applied in smaller villages on a smaller scale as they are being applied on the big level as well. Well, this is, you know, gradually, you know, once you have the, uh, the infrastructure, the, the major grid, mm. and you actually, you actually take from the major grid to smaller villages, and without electricity, you will never be able to develop mm. a country. I mean, electricity means development, whether the source of electricity is power plant or solar or even wind, mm. I mean, whatever. Without energy, without uh, electricity, you will never be able to develop uh, a successful uh, uh, or have a sustainable development program. Yes. So what's happening right now with, the, with, with 
you know, with the projects that the, the president is handling, the highways and uh, the power plants and the, uh, the solar plant, the huge, uh, uh, you know, farm in Aswan, Bimbam. Bimbam. Yes. Uh, I think we, we need two other Bimbams, by the way. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe we, be, we, we will be able to even export mm. the uh, energy, energy right yes. to Europe, whatever. You know, we have uh, the whole planet is actually suffering from freezing, and we have beautiful weather in Egypt so far. Mm. So we might as well utilize this. We can actually ex export this. Yes. I, I think it's sooner or later we're going to come to this, but uh, mm. uh, I think the, the, the government and the president is very keen on uh, solving all the problems that, uh, that the Egyptians are facing, especially in the field of agriculture. Yes, one of uh, the main directives as well as we did see in the past six or seven years under President Assisi is to be enhancing the cooperation and the coordination between the government and the private sector in terms of agriculture. How do you see this in the uh, Mustaqbal Musr project or Egypt's future uh, and beyond as well? I hope, I hope uh, that, uh, you know, once this area is cultivated, uh, a gigantic uh, company could be for a, a shareholding company, mm. as I said before. And, uh, you know, the way to manage this company is to have uh, young people to have shares in it, uh, reasonable uh, prices. But again, uh, I would like to see, uh, you know, this company uh, train young people in Egypt to use modern equipment, uh, 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 get new uh, skills, actually. Yes. Uh, though I, I educated and uh, I have a degree in, or a diploma in uh, accounting, but uh, there is no job for an accountant, so I will work as a mechanic mm -hmm. or a tractor driver or a specialist in ag uh, aggregation systems. All of this is, once you can read and write, mm. it's very easy to adapt to, to this new job. It's not really a mystery or something very difficult to, to gain. It's new skills, and we're going to have to uh, stop thinking about uh, my degree. Mm. I mean, uh, you yes. You change the mindset. Right, you're going to have to change the circle where you actually are working on, change mm. careers, and, uh, and get new skills, actually. Yes, uh, Engineer Hassan Shaban, the former Vice Chairman of uh, the Farmer Syndicate. Thank you very much for being with us tonight and the valuable information that you provided us with. Thank you very much for inviting me. Appreciate it. Anytime. And uh, this brings us to the end of uh, the daily debate for tonight. Thank you for watching and goodbye.